This video is a brief run through of what the task sheet should look like for this assignment. Keywords for this particular sheet are conductor and insulator. So these are the keywords that will be need to be put into the results table when you finished describing or drawing each experiment. Experiment 1 is electrical conductivity. You're testing copper, aluminium and polycarbonate plastic to see if they will light a bulb in the circuit. This is the circuit diagram. This is a bulb. This is a battery. The copper, aluminium and plastic we put in this gap. If the bulb lights up, then it's a conductor. If there's no light for the bulb, then it's an insulator. Since copper and aluminium are metals, we would expect the bulb to light up with these two materials. Polycarbonate plastic is part of the casing on a lot of electrical devices, so you'd expect that to be an insulator. This link shows some pupils trying this experiment, or one very similar to it, on YouTube. The second experiment is on thermal conductivity. In other words, we're testing how well materials conduct heat. This is the apparatus that we used. There's a flame underneath here, which is heating all four materials stuck to this rig. It's quite difficult to draw this apparatus, but it looks something like this. The materials attached are not quite the same as we have in our test or that we're interested in, but once again we'd expect copper and aluminium, being metals, to be reasonable conductors of heat, while plastic is not. Experiment 3 is looking at the solubility of copper, aluminium and polycarbonate plastic. A brief description of what you do is here, and a diagram underneath. So what you do is put a small sample of each of these three materials into a test tube and add a small amount of water, say half full, and observe over time whether they dissolve or not. Now in this particular case, copper, aluminium and polycarbonate plastic are not soluble. So our results are pretty boring really, it's always the same answer for those materials. We were also asked to carry a hardness test on the materials. So the apparatus is uh, a one kilogram weight, a ball bearing, the material you're going to test, and after you drop the weight, there's a dent made in the material which you measure with a traveling microscope. The results are put in this table. So what you're putting in this table is how big a dent was made in the sample, which is over here. Using the travelling microscope we can see how big a dent is made and uh, polycarbonate plastic would have the smallest dent because it's very very hard and copper is the softest of the three so it would have the biggest dent. Another test we're asked to do is here, melting point. It's impossible to do the melting point in the classroom so you're provided with a help button. All you need to do is hit it, look up the temperatures in degrees centigrade the temperatures at which these materials melt and add those temperatures to this table. A final extra experiment has been added to this uh, report to do with the viscosity of materials. Now uh, what's happening in this diagram is that these little beads are being dropped down tubes filled with various liquids. The faster the ball drops, the thinner the liquid. The ball drops really slowly then it's a more viscous liquid. The diagram for our simple experiment that we did in class was something like this. Only these three liquids were tested to show the idea of viscosity. So, viscosity is how runny a liquid is, and a liquid that has a high viscosity is a very thick liquid indeed. Now, interestingly, copper aluminium and polycarbonate plastic are all solid at uh, room temperature uh, so they wouldn't undergo this viscosity test so I guess if they're not liquids 
then mobile phone manufacturers aren't that interested in them. Examples, well here are a few but I'm sure you can look up others on the internet if you wanted to. The final page in this section is a summary of your findings, a summary of all the experiments we've just looked at. So we know that copper is used in our mobile phone for the circuitry, but its material properties are things like its melting point, its conductivity, its insolubility, its hardness. All of these things should be referred to from the previous pages. The same applies to aluminium and polycarbonate plastic. What did we find out about these materials? Uh, use of aluminium in the mobile phone is usually to construct the internal frame or possibly to be a backing for the battery to absorb heat if it overheats. That's making it a heat sink. Polycarbonate plastic, uh, generally speaking in a mobile phone, it can be used to make the screen. But that tends to be a specialised glass product. So generally the polycarbonate plastic is used to make the plastic backing or any internal materials that need to resist scratching or bending or just generally protect the phone from uh, any kind of damage because it is so hard.